Hey there, so excited for today's topic. First of all, let me know in the comments if you're here joining me live or if you're catching the replay, put replay in the comments. Um, so happy to be uh, talking about this subject because so many people, especially influencers, um, experience negativity online and offline so this is a big one and i feel like a lot of us are scared to experience this and i'm going to talk a little bit more about how to deal with this so uh welcome to the spark show in this episode i'll be talking about how to deal with negativity online and offline because we've all heard of it some of us have experienced it and some of us have learned to overcome it now if this is the first time we've ever connected my name is gwen lane and i'm the founder of the spark school and creator of the seal the brand deal course where i teach influencers how to grow and monetize their personal brand so i started in influencer marketing uh in 2015 as a blogger with my lifestyle and travel company the la girl before that i worked in digital marketing on the brand side for over a decade so i have the unique experience and perspective of being on the brand side and the influencer side. Three years ago, I started helping influencers do the same, grow and monetize, because I realized that a lot of them know, know how to turn this into a real business where they're making an income and not just getting free stuff. And let's face it, content creation and growing an audience takes a lot of time and effort. So I believe that everyone deserves to get paid for their work and not getting paid would be illegal for any type of work, right? And I believe that everyone deserves to uh, get paid for their work and you shouldn't let companies who are making a profit of your work not pay you and not have you as part of their marketing budget because trust me, they do have one. You can't be a business and not have a marketing budget. Word of mouth only goes so far these days and influencer marketing is the new word of mouth. And I mean, everyone is on social media and they need to find they need help finding the right products and services. And that's where we come in. We create content as influencers and help our audience with whatever their challenges are. Hi, Leslie, thanks for tuning in. If you're here, let me know in the comments. I love to know who's here and who's watching. And hopefully that's resonating with you right now. Maybe you have started this influencer thing and you're not really sure how to grow your audience or monetize, but the thing I want you to kind of start with is to know the industry and know the business side of it. Uh, that influencer marketing is a, just another channel. It's another uh, advertising platform, just like TV, radio, print, billboards, all of these are advertising channels and influencer marketing is part of that advertising channel. Instead of brands running their own ads, they can hire influencers to create content for them and tap into that audience that's already built in, that already has uh, some sort of trust and connection with an influencer and we've seen ROI, return on investment, be a lot higher than regular ads because influencers are already creating content, are already building this connection. Hey Sarah, good morning, thanks for tuning in. So I wanted to talk about negativity today because it comes in all forms. And the first thing I wanted to talk about is the word influencer. Unfortunately, sometimes it comes with a negative connotation. People say, oh, I hate influencers. Well, we all know it's not that simple, right? Just like celebrities. I hate all celebrities. That's not really a thing, right? Some celebrities are awesome and some celebrities give to charitable causes and some become philanthropists and use their audience for good. Um, and just like anything, there's always good and bad, right? Not all doctors are good. We've heard horror stories about doctors. Just because of a certain profession or a certain label doesn't mean they're good or bad, right? Not all teachers are good. Some teachers are amazing, right? They're saints for dealing with kids all day, but they're also bad teachers. So when people say things like, oh, I hate influencers, that's kind of a, to me, that is kind of a naive or kind of an ignorant thing to say because you can't generalize a group of people, right? You can't say 
all celebrities are bad or all CEOs are bad or all whatevers are bad, right? Not all influencers are bad and are all about themselves taking selfies, but you have to have that strong enough vision of yourself and actually have that conversation with yourself on what you're trying to do, right? I believe there are influencers out there who want to make an impact. Like I only work with students who care about making a difference and creating positive change. Let's face it, content creation and audience growth is a lot of work. So if you're just doing it for free and for fame, you're probably going to quit really soon, right? Because it actually takes time and effort. Most of the people you see who are successful at being an influencer or content creator, they've been doing it for a very long time, years, even decades, because it takes time, commitment, and dedication. And the thing is, is a lot of people don't understand what influencer marketing is and what influencers do. So a lot of the times they put this blanket statement description on it, like not even understanding what the economics are and how much these influencers make. I'm sure you guys have seen some of the uh, articles on how much people are making on TikTok. These teenagers and these Gen Z amazing creators on YouTube, even kid creators on YouTube making millions of dollars a year. And so when you start thinking of the economics and actually trying to understand, a lot of people don't know what they don't know, right? They don't understand it. And so they just say, oh, this is wrong, or I don't know what this is, or this person just is on the YouTube, right? <laughs> um, but if you understand like, okay, if you have a really good channel, of engaged people and you show a commercial or an ad just like you would on Grey's Anatomy or on Scandal and wine people loving up, you know, those wine commercials on Scandal and you're targeting the right people for co companies and brands, it's actually a great investment. And it's not just a Gen Z or millennial taking a selfie and being all about themselves, telling people to go buy stuff, right? That's not what I do. And I don't think that's what you do. There are people who do that, but we can't focus on that because we got to focus on the people that we're trying to help and our audience and the people and the impact that we want to make. So first of all, you have to have an honest conversation with yourself on why you're doing this. If you're doing it to help people, then it shouldn't matter what that one Facebook friend says about it, right? You need to have a very compelling reason to do this or you will end up quitting. If you want to be committed to this, you have to reconnect with your why and the reason why you're doing it in the first place. Now, when it's your friends or family, it might be a little difficult to deal with. Let me know in the comments if you kind of have felt weird about telling your family about it or your family kind of thinks it's like just this weird, silly thing that you're doing on the side. You may have to be more patient and give a real explanation so they can understand what it is you do. You may have to go into the technicalities of social media as an advertising platform and why brands pay influencers. I have an episode on the podcast, episode 26, that might help you explain it or you can send the links to my episodes and have me explain it and they can actually take the time to understand, right? You can use the TV commercials analogy. Most people will understand that, right? Like companies pay for spots on commercials during shows um, to get in front of the right people. And your channels as an influencer is the show and sponsored content is the commercials. So the thing is they might not understand and they may not be supportive as you want them to be. And the sad part is it's not really their job to support you, right? It, yeah, it would be nice, but we can't expect full support from people who really don't understand what we do. That's why it's so important to find a community uh, that does understand what you're doing and will root for you, comment on your posts, and share your stuff. That's why I created the Spark Society, an online membership community where you can find other influencers and mentors to connect with and get the support you need to move forward. It's really awkward when you're like posting something and you ask your friends and family to be like, can you go like my post or comment on my post? You know, in the beginning, that might be the situation, but 
you're going to get to the point where it's going to be weird asking that. So for me, I like to put myself in communities with like-minded people that are also influencers that know what we're doing, that support each other. And that's why I wanted to create the Smart Society. And so really, sometimes you can't expect that support, right? It's not their job to support you. It's your job to support yourself and find groups that will support you and understand what you're doing because negativity is part of this job description. If you look at the biggest influencers out there, they all have haters, they all have trolls, nobody has 100% positive comments, there's always someone who says something about anything, right? Most of the time when we create content, we get positive feedback and comments, but then we get to that one or a few, and then we tend to focus on that and forget about all the good stuff. Who's guilty of this? I know because this happens to me all the time. Like I put out a piece of content, I put it on email, I think it's awesome, I get great feedback, and then there's this one person who is like, you know, oh, this is horrible, please unsubscribe. I'm like, you can unsubscribe without telling me all this stuff. And I take it personally, and then I get up being upset, and I forget about all the people who are like, thank you so much for sending that email. Did you guys see that email Gwen sent out? The Motivation Monday was awesome, it really motivated me. It just it made me forget about all the good stuff when we focus on the negative stuff. And that is something that you're going to have to learn to overcome through time, right? Now that I've been doing this for over five years, I think it's going to be six years next year, it's just part of the job description. It's if you want to be a public figure, you want to put yourself out there, you want to reach a lot of people, you can't really choose who you're reaching all the time, right? So you have to choose your focus. That's really how to deal with negativity. If I had to sum it up in the most simplest way possible is to choose your focus. You get to choose if you're going to focus on the 99% of your audience who loves you and loves what you're putting out there or the 1% of of negative comments. And the thing is, most of the time, the negativity is not even about you. Usually it's a reflection of themselves and not really something you can do anything about. Most of the time when I see something negative, it's because that person was having a bad day, which has nothing to do with you, right? Most of the people would still act that way no matter what you say or do. And so if you spend your life trying to get everything positive, you're just going to be spending your life being a people pleaser. And we know that's impossible, right? We cannot please everyone. We can only try our best put what we can out there with the good, the good intentions that we have to help people. And that's really it, right? <laughs> um, we talk, we go back to that saying that people say, like, if I could just help one person, right? So if you could just help one person with the post that you put out today, would it not be worth it for the, I don't know, one other person who's like, oh, this is, this is crappy stuff, <laughs> And be like, okay, great, unfollow me, moving on. Um, there's so many people who can and will find your stuff and your content beneficial and would be like, thank you so much for this recommendation. I've been looking for the best anti-aging moisturizer and you saved me thousands of dollars trying to find the right one because you told me and you were able to try it. Like that's the kind of impact, right? People think it's just like, oh, I just talk about makeup. No, you are saving people time. You're saving people money and you're helping people feel more confident and feel more beautiful. So sometimes people like to skew things in a different way and in, in a negative way. It depends on what lens they have on, right? And we can't control the lens that people have. We can only control the lens that we have and how we're gonna see things and how we're gonna react, right? Um, the thing is, um, the negativity is not about you. So just remember that, right? You have to make the choice in every moment on what to focus on. So. You can't control how people are going to react. You can only control what you what you do after that reaction or what happens afterward when you get that feedback. So you get to choose in that moment the impact that you want to make on the world or the comments or reaction of people who are never going to like you no matter what you do, right? There's always those people that just keep hanging around. They don't like it or they don't comment or they don't want to do anything, but they're still hanging around for some reason, right? Um, I've had people that 
you know, they've been following me for years and then they only commented like two years later when they realized I was a real person and that like they realized that, you know, I had good intentions. <laughs> like some people, it takes some time to warm up and that's totally fine. Everyone's on a different timeline, right? And you can't force that and you can't control that. Um, some people are dealing with their own stuff, which is has nothing to do with us. And we just have to focus, focus, focus on what we can do to create the change that we want to create in the world. And the thing is, we can't be afraid of that judgment, right? Or accept that people are always going to be judging us anyway. As human beings, we're just judgers. Like we judge everything when we see something walking by, when we look at something in the store. So you can either choose to not act and not do anything, play it small and not share your gift with a word, world or to conquer your fear and take action so that you can help someone out there that needs your help right now. So let me know in the comments what you're going to choose. Are you going to choose impact or are you going to choose the negativity? Those are really your two choices. And so I get it. Like we're emotional. Sometimes we see something and I get emotional too. Trust me. That's why I don't do customer service in my company anymore because I get very, very emotionally attached when someone says something like, you know, they want to cancel or my program didn't was like full of shit right? Um, I shouldn't, I shouldn't swear on Facebook. This video is going to get, um, so really like there's people who's always not going to be happy no matter what you do. And those are not, that's not a good use of your time, right? You want to invest your time in the people who want your help, who need you, who are, uh, focused on, what you are trying to do. Um, Sarah says impact, Shannon says yes, focus on creating the change we want to make impact. And Leslie said, I choose impact. So hopefully this helps you um, deal with that negativity because it's out there, it happens almost every day. The bigger you get, the more you will encounter it. New level, new devil, right? Um, it is it is a real thing. and. As you do more stuff like more media, you write a book, you get on TV, you are going to experience it because there's always people out there who cannot handle the success, who cannot handle your growth, especially people you know, right? I've had to break up with a lot of friends and even family members who was not able to see past their own lens of negativity, right? And unfortunately, you know, I cannot be able to help people if I am in that toxic environment. And so sometimes you do have to make choices and decide for yourself what you need to do to make sure that you're able to fulfill your mission, right? To fulfill that vision that you have in your mind of impacting people. And I've shared my vision and mission with you guys before um, that I want to impact a billion people. And I can't do that if I'm like crying because someone said something negative in my comments, right? Like me, not that crying's bad, but like if I stay in that space, I'm not going to be able to make an impact. So thank you so much for listening to The Spark Show, and I will see you in the next episode. So Celia says, impact. Leslie says, it's all good. You're a human. I love it. Uh, so let me know if you guys have any questions. I have a few more minutes um, to answer any questions, but I think I kind of covered it with negativity. I just want you guys to know that it's normal. It happens. It's going to keep happening. So the best thing to do is to cultivate a healthy mindset. I have a lot of mindset episodes on the podcast that you should definitely listen to. One is called Playing Small is Selfish. Um, I talk a lot, I, they have a lot of episodes and I know a lot of my most successful students just keep listening to the episodes every time they're feeling like they need it, right? And I don't want you to also wait till you need it. I want you to have a regular schedule. So maybe it's like every week or when you're in the car or when you're washing dishes or you're doing something where you can listen and you can kind of um, make sure um, to cultivate that healthy mindset. And that's why we have weekly mindset calls inside the Spark Society. So if you're a member, make sure every Wednesday you go to those calls because that's really what's going to help you move forward. Because most of the time we get in our own way, right? Our self-doubt, 
are, you know, fears of judgments, fear of failures. And this is why we have the coaching calls every single week. Now we added a strategy call. So we have two strategy calls this week uh, or this month in October. Um, we have one on Saturday. Uh, so make sure if you are not a member yet, make sure you watch our free class. Um, and that'll help you get started on what we do and kind of the steps to get to monetizing. And you'll learn more about the Seal the Brand Deal course and the Spark Society membership in there. So thank you guys so much for joining me and I will see you next time. Bye.